I'm Ryan. I'm Judd. And welcome back to part time. And today we are going to be doing our review for A Clockwork Orange. A Clockwork Orange is a 1971 film by Stanley Kubrick and it stars a young Malcolm McDowell as a character simply known as Alexander DeLarge. Alex and his band of droogs, as he likes to refer to them as, go on a series of debaucherous things, including beating up old homeless people and raping and murdering other people. Uh, they quite like the ultraviolet, as it were. Anyways, after a burglary goes awry, Alexander gets arrested, and in prison, Alex agrees to a form of uh, Pavlovian experiments that is supposed to reform him. Once he is quote-unquote reformed, he is set out into the world and runs into the writer whose wife that they earlier raped, and the writer discovers it is the man who indeed raped his wife and decides to torture him. Fearing that the torture would never end, Alex decides to commit suicide, only the suicide attempt fails and he wakes up in a hospital. After some time in the hospital, the uh, conditioning that the state has put him through finally wears off, and the movie ends with Alex being completely reformed, quote unquote, and back to his ultraviolet ways. Now this is a, a movie that I actually had not seen before. It, um, it's a movie that's, it's kind of, I mean, it's well known. People know of this, of this movie, and I've, I've known of, the, of this movie for a very long time. I've just never actually gotten to watch it. Um, Judd uh, has the movie. I think he watched it for yeah, the first uh, time, kind of, kind of recent in the past year or so. Yeah, I would say About, it was over a year ago. I think, yeah, a little but. over a year, not too long ago. But like, I, I went out and I bought, uh, I saw the special edition Blu-ray on sale. I think it was, uh, I think it was about twelve bucks or so. It was, it was a good price though. I mean, a lot of features with this, but um, I knew that it was a critically acclaimed movie, and it was one of those. Uh, um, famous or infamous movies, however you want to put it, and uh, I thought about giving it a shot, and I picked it up, and I watched it when I, when I bought it, but uh, that's right, you said you had never seen it, so I, I thought we could review it just so you had a chance to see it, and um, it's it's an interesting movie, to say the <laughs> least. It, it is interesting. Um, how would you classify it? Would you, would you say it's a drama, or... Uh, we know it's social commentary. Well, yeah, it's but uh, but it's. I mean, I mean it takes place in a dystopian future, which really just starting the movie out watching, I didn't really get. I didn't. I, I can understand that. Well, they use a lot of slang, yeah, and, and it's not even necessarily British slang. I think it's just slang that's made up. It's probably made up in the novel. It, I can't. I don't know who wrote the novel, but uh, Anthony Burgess. Anthony Burgess. Okay, but uh, I I think he might have come up with various slang because it, it takes place in, in uh, England I'm, I'm sure or, or I believe Britain, yes or UK, in right? like dystopian future um, version but there's a lot of slang that's very confusing because they're using a, just using it as a common you know there's talking and they're speaking English but like even even when I rewatched this when we were rewatching I'm thinking to myself some of that stuff I just don't know what they're saying some like, of it was that uh, there were moments like there's a scene in the early moments when they've stolen the car and him and his gang are driving and one of them is yelling is saying something <laughs> over and over and I can't understand a word he's saying. Yeah. Um and I don't think it's because 
I think, I mean, it was just this, I think the sound and everything, I couldn't really understand what he was saying, not that he wasn't, I don't know. I yeah, couldn't, well, I, I couldn't, mean, it may have been because he was saying nonsense. Yeah, I had it, no he idea. could have, yeah, he could have just been talking nonsense, and, uh, but, like, that, once the movie starts, uh, getting moving, uh, you understand it more and more, I guess, because they, because, like, the first would you say 15, 20 minutes? They're following mainly these these youths. Yeah, we'll see. Like, you know, I didn't really get into the movie until Alex was in prison. Yeah. It didn't really... I mean, there, all the events that lead up to him getting into prison are yeah. uh, what we follow at the beginning. You know, they're in the milk bar, which, you know, it opens up, and there's nothing that made me think future, but at the same time... Like they're in this milk bar, and all the tables are <laughs> naked women. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're. They look like naked women. They're like Statue, white, yeah, white, white statues. statues. Yeah. But it's just very bizarre. Um, and a lot of art actually. There's art in Alex's room. There's art in his oh, yeah. house that his parents have, um, and art in the cat lady's home. Oh yeah. That is all very um, vulgar, and. Um, I guess you'd say more degenerate. Yeah. And um, it's, I guess it kind of shows that society is more, more of a degenerate society in general. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say it's all that way because Alex does make a comment about the cat lady having that kind of art, so it's probably not that common. Yeah. But it's something that you know, even Alex's parents, it wasn't like. Yeah. It it was something that bothered him, and and the cat lady, her all of her art was just out in the open, like it wasn't. Yeah. Something yeah. she hid, so. It it um, but the main moral question of the movie really is about uh, free will. Yeah, the concept yeah. of free will. Because uh, I know we we just did our little plot synopsis, but just to sort of uh, rehash it a little bit, um, it starts off uh, Malcolm McDowell's in a, um, a a little street gang, almost like a petty gang, and they they go on various crimes, you know, just. Uh, Debauchery. They've obviously done this before. Yeah, yeah. They've always obviously do this before, and they go uh, fairly early in the uh, film. They is a rape scene. They just drive out to the countryside and break into they, people's homes. They beat they, up the old old man. Yeah, beat him up. Then they beat up a rival gang. They steal a car. They break into the author's house. Yeah. They beat him till he's crippled, which we find out at the end of the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, they rape his wife in front of him. Yeah. And. Uh, like, and they come back, and there's, uh, I guess one of his gang members uh, tries to uh, take control of the gang, you might well, say. Well, what happens, or He makes yeah. suggestions about what the gang should do, and uh, Alex is, uh, I guess, a very controlling, like, person, and he doesn't want to give any control to anyone in his gang, so... He likes his leadership. He likes his leadership, so he, he beats up a... a Two gang members that are in his gang to sort of, uh, sort of reaffirm his control, mm -hmm. and let's see, he gets arrested for. I'm, I'm having a blank. Okay, oh, so okay. he beats up his gang members, yeah, they, and then he asks them what was the plan that they had because when they they had this okay, plan yeah. that they wanted to make all this money, and so their plan was to break into this lady's house. This the cat lady that we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, she has like a, a ton of cats. So yeah, it was it was terrible. I can't imagine being around that many cats. <laughs> I'm not a cat person. <laughs> so um, Alex breaks in. Well, Alex first he tries to do the same technique he did at yeah, the, like the house of the author. He says that there, there's a, an accident. And yeah. He needs to use the phone. His friend is dying or yeah. something. You know, he's got to call an ambulance or something. But unlike the other couple who was not smart enough, uh, this lady does not let him in. Yeah. She calls the police about it because she read in the paper because they had reported what happened to them yeah. so that she knew it was a similar technique that had been used. So she calls the police, but then Alex walks in the room, so he's broken in the house, and he um, taunts her about her artwork, yeah. and there's this big phallic... Um, <laughs> piece of artwork she has. Yeah, it's it's well it's, it's I mean it's a it, giant penis. It's a giant penis. It's a big it white penis that's sort of like a white statue. Yes. And he picks it up and he starts like attacking her with it. Yeah. And she's 
attacking him. Anyway, he ends up just slamming it over her head, and it kills her. But yeah. he doesn't know it kills her. Yeah, he wasn't. I, I don't know if I guess he wasn't trying to kill her. But I don't know I if mean, he was a murderer yet at this point. Yeah, uh, I mean, he was he, a rapist, but he yeah, wasn't he, a murderer yeah. yet. But he wasn't intending to murder her. So, but he does that, and then they hear the he hears the police sirens, runs out. One of his gang members smashes his face with a um, pint bottle of milk. Yeah, and the gang runs off. Alex gets arrested. That's how he gets arrested. Yeah, so he basically gets screwed over by his own gang. Um, but then we get to the actual point of the movie. Yeah, at this that, point. that's and and this is what twenty minutes in, maybe maybe twenty five, thirty minutes. I yeah, guess. and it's not. I mean, it, it's. I guess it's necessary to set the movie up. And there's a few other things that happen. Um, I mean, Alex goes back home. We meet his family. Yeah, he he doesn't go to school, and his parents just let him not go to school. Yeah. Um, they know he was out late. He brings two girls home, and they, yeah, yeah. you know, in the book, because I, I've read, I read some about the book after we watched the movie. I haven't read the book, but in the book, he's 15 years old. But they made him older in the movie, I guess, to avoid controversy for some of those scenes, like yeah. the rape scene and stuff. In the book, he rapes a couple of ten-year-old girls, I think, because, I mean, like I said, he's a terrible person. Yeah. Okay. But that doesn't happen in the movie. Um, they're, the two girls instead are about his same age, and it's consensual. He yeah. brings them back. But again, it's a very, like, especially at the time, it was very much more degenerate because it's one guy, uh, two girls. Yeah. It wasn't a common thing. I guess in today's age, it probably wouldn't be yeah, considered. Probably... People wouldn't care as much. But anyway... So that happens, but um, it's a the way that's done is to the flight of the bumblebee, and it's done in a really <laughs> fast pace. Yeah. So it's not. I mean, it's not a. It's really weird. It's really interesting. I, I mean, scene. I, like, it wasn't really. I don't know that it was necessary at all no, to the plot of the movie. It, it really that really was. They could I have would, just cut it out completely. And, I mean, as odd as this sounds, I think um, the rape scene and the murder scenes are more necessary to the plot of the movie than. than I mean, that that's because, necessary so we see how bad yeah, that you, is. You this, see how terrible that scene human really being was. Just is. I mean, that's. It was it, just. It, it, it was, wasn't really. It was there. It's like okay, he has sex with two women, and it's. I mean, I guess. But that's it. It's I guess if you want to count it's promiscuity not. as as another thing, yeah. he's. You know, but that's bad something for now him, people but, wouldn't watching but, this movie. Now people wouldn't care. Yeah, people movie. wouldn't care now. But like even people today, obviously, you know, even the then, I don't know if some people would it care as much. I mean, the things he'd already done were so much worse. Yeah, it, it seemed much more. If it had been mild, if it had been scale. another rape scene like in the book, yeah. it, then that would be. Bad. But it wasn't, and it was just. That scene could have been gone and it would have been fine. It yeah. wasn't, wasn't really a necessary scene at all. But the prison, this is the important yeah, stuff. Yeah, he so. goes to prison. And, and that, that's when, like you said, the, the actual, uh, the main focal point of sort of the, I don't know, which, uh, the point of the movie, but like the the philosophical questions that get raised in the movie. You know, that's where they come in, is once he goes to prison. So, I mean... And he's there for yeah. two years. I was there for two. Uh, okay. um, I wasn't sure how long he was there. He's there for two years, and I have. I, they paint the chaplain in a very um, positive light, which is good. I thought yeah. it was good, um, and it's most likely because the author is a. It was a lapsed Catholic, so <laughs> there are some scenes in this movie that. Um, you can kind of see 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 that in where he where the his. Um, religious views kind of get brought in in certain certain ways. Like um, Alex starts reading the Bible all, a lot, huh. and he helps the chaplain all the time. But um, but you also see because Alex is a, a sociopath, his twisted view of when he's reading That's the right. Bible, and it's a very interesting scene that I actually liked. Because we all of a sudden see um, him imagining what he's reading in the Bible, and it's uh, Jesus carrying his cross to, to Calvary yeah. and um, being whipped by a Roman soldier. But Alex is imagining himself as a Roman soldier, and he's imagining himself uh, enjoying it. Yeah. Because he's a sociopath. It's like he's the, getting the, off yeah. on whipping Jesus. Um, and it's... But it's interesting seeing because some people, you know, they might put themselves in that place thinking, you know, because of their own, you know. Yeah, you know, Jesus died for my sins, and this yeah, is I did you know, this to him. Yeah, yeah and this is thing. what I did to him. But Alex, the way Alex is looking at it is completely different. And yeah, then he's I mean, envisioning other things like 
probably even further back in the Bible, like people having the handmaidens of the. Yeah, yeah. I guess like kind of like when um, Abraham had to, uh, when Sarah tried to get Abraham to conceive with other. Yeah. So that he had multiple, well, even David had multiple wives and concubines. Yeah, so he, there's a scene of him just imagining himself in those times. Oh yeah, um, where he's surrounded by surrounded like, by women, women and stuff. Feeding him but it's also he talks about how he thought felt like everything got boring, you know, towards <laughs> the end, where it's just like the letters and a fall yeah. and everything like that. Um, it was kind of an interesting scene, I thought, and. Um, but, you know, that's when he approaches the chaplain about this program he's been hearing about that can yeah. instantly reform somebody. Well, not instantly, but once they go well, through yeah, it, it'll it's reform them and make it so that they won't do bad things anymore. Yeah. Um, and he may truly, well, based on the way the book ends, he may truly actually somewhere not want to do bad things anymore. But um, the uh, he... The chaplain's concern is that this process basically would take away his free will, and it, yeah, it wouldn't it, be it, that he was not doing bad things because he didn't want to. It'd be that he's not doing bad things because he can't. Yeah. Like he absolutely can't. And that and that's what the the argument the chaplain actually has with the head of the program director. He's like, because uh, basically the program is they strap him in a chair, and they sort of flash imagery and um, just video footage and everything of just horrible acts and they give him an injection to make him sick right uh, I think that's how they make him sick right well, he, he they gave him this, an, they, like he's eating they give him an injection um, yeah I think they make and, him and, sick and they, they make him physically sick when he he watches this because at first he's he's enjoying seeing all this nasty just a holocaust footage and all this other stuff mm -hmm. but like once the drug kicks in he um he feels like he's going to throw up. He just feels physically terrible. And, and one thing we didn't didn't mention. One thing we didn't mention. Um, so he lo he loves classical music apparently. Oh yeah. Particularly Beethoven. And yeah. this comes up during these this experiment. Yeah. Um, his uh, Beethoven's ninth is and, his um, favorite. And because the first scene there, he's watching these guys beat this guy up over and over again. And then the second uh, movie is uh, I think was it. A rape, uh, yeah. Basically, it was a rape movie. Yeah, a rape movie. Then the third one was uh, the Nazis. Yeah, and the the sickness is really starting to kick in. Well, it started to kick in during the the rape yeah. one, where he's started to feel bad watching it. But during the Nazi one, Beethoven's Ninth plays. Yeah, and, and this <laughs> he he flips out because he knows. I think he probably knows what they're doing because like. The, the drugs making him physically feel I ill so whenever he sees something bad it triggers a psychosomatic response to where he, he instantly starts like he feels like he's gonna vomit like and um, he knows that visually his body's connecting it and whenever they play Beethoven's Ninth he knows that his body will also connect the Ninth Symphony to uh, to feeling that feeling too, so he, he starts flipping out. He's like, "No, don't don't play that," you know, because he didn't want Beethoven to be ruined for him. Because he know he knew that they were going to ruin you know violent behavior and rape and all that for him, you know, from the program. Well, he was fine with them. He was fine with that because that's what he wanted. Oh yeah, he was fine with that. But, but he like, did not want that would, music play. Yeah, he didn't want the music play because he knew it it would ruin the music for him. He, he couldn't listen to it anymore, and which eventually does happen, you know. But the doctor, he was like, he didn't care. Yeah, because he didn't care. The, Alex did really terrible things, so he didn't care if he ruined Beethoven for him. Yeah. Which I can see that point yeah, for sure, because I mean, what Alex did was absolutely terrible. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's like it's the whole... It, as it proceeds, it makes the argument against you know taking away someone's free will, which I can definitely see the chaplain's point. Yeah, point of view. it's true. And he like he was arguing because they once they reform uh, Al Alex, I'm sorry, Alex. Uh, they bring him on stage and they have a guy punch him and he show that Alex can't fight back because he literally starts to feel ill when uh, he tries to do anything violent. And they were like, see, he's cured. And then the uh, Chaplin jumps up on stage and he says, you know, it's not a cure. He's like, you just made it to where he can't, he can't do violent things. He said, yes, you, he's not going to be a criminal. He's like, but you completely stripped him of his choice. There's no, mentally, 
he's still in the same spot that he was. You know, it's not he doesn't have any moral objection to beating up old men. It's just well, he couldn't even defend himself. Either, well, no, no, so he couldn't even crazy. defend himself. Yeah. So, so I mean, even if he wasn't the uh, even in self defense, I mean, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was. Um, that's the big question in the movie is, you know, is it, is it worth the concept, or is it, do the ends justify the means, you know, is it, um, is he really cured, you know, <laughs> which, uh, he yeah. gets out. You yeah, know? they release they him release after him. this because he's cured. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, whenever he's going to, f- like, it, he almost vomits every time oh, yeah. something yeah, he, happens, he, he, that's his reaction. Yeah. He goes home first. His parents have rented the, his room out to somebody. Yeah. Um, just, I mean... And his old gang members became cops who actually beat him up. They, um, he gets beat up by the hobo that he was beating up in the beginning of the That's movie. Right. And again, a gang of other homeless guys. And yeah. the police break it up. Then they discover it's Alex. So they take Alex and they almost drown him. Yeah. But they, they beat him. Um... And he just makes his way, trying to get somewhere safe, and then he finds his way back to the house of the author whose yeah. home they broke in. Oh, and now when they broke into these homes earlier in the movie, too, they were wearing masks, so they couldn't identify Th- That's them. true. The, so that's the author didn't point. know uh, who broke in and beat him and raped his wife. And now we see he, the author's in a wheelchair, and he has a very strong <laughs> man that, that lives in his home. Played by David Prowse, who is very tall and strong. Yeah. And this guy apparently takes care of him and helps him around the house. I don't know if it, if it was somebody related to him or... I don't it know never what. really goes we into it. We never really it, hear who I he mean, is. I mean, I'd imagine he's just a hired hand. But, uh, it might go into more detail in the book. I don't but, know. Yeah. Um, but he, he makes his way to the house and doesn't, like you said, he doesn't really realize that it's the author's house. He said he realized, he think it seems familiar to him, but he doesn't know why. And then when he goes in, he and recognizes the old guy. The author's name is F. Alexander, which I remember just because of Alex's name. So it's easy to remember uh-huh. Alexander. So the guy who, who they his gang crippled, his last name was Alexander. Huh. Um, I don't know if there was any particular reason that he had that in the book, of the names. But, uh, mm. but uh, yeah, so... Like I said, he, the the guy, the author is like a good-hearted person, all, but the actor they have playing it is so creepy. Yes, um, uh, the facial expressions are just. Ugh. If you've seen Breaking Bad and the uh, the old guy in the wheelchair who has to ring the bell, um, some of the expressions on this guy's face reminded me of that guy. Yeah. Well, we we know that the guy, old guys, he seems to be fairly good-hearted because like he sees this kid beat up and drag off the street and he's like well I'll, I'll nurse you back to health and he, he he does recognize Alex from the paper but he only recognizes Alex from the paper because Alex was arrested and the paper reported that he was reformed and the author is against this method of which they used on Alex but yeah. Alex never confessed to obviously the rape so I, he didn't know that it was Alex that it broke in and raped Yeah, he was only arrested for the murder. Yeah, he was only arrested the... for the murder. That was it. And um, so everything was going along fine. He gives Alex uh, sort of uh, nurses Alex, or he has uh, David Prowse sort of give Alex some new clothes and sort of bandage him up a little bit, you know, clean him up. And everything was going fine for Alex until he started taking a bath. <laughs> and during the rape scene, they... Alex starts singing, I'm singing in the rain, while he's raping the guy's wife. And uh, for some reason, Alex, when he was taking a bath uh, later on in the movie, decided to sing that in the bathtub this time, singing in the rain. And when he sings that, the author hears it, like in the other room, and he immediately knows that that's the guy that uh, broke yeah, in. And, broke in, raped his wife, and yeah. crippled him. So he... He drugs Alex with it, uh, puts I guess something in his food or, or wine. I think it was. Yeah, they have food and wine, and they and while that's going on though, they're having Alex confess about the things that were done to cure him because they're trying. They still are trying to use him to yeah um, to take down this this process that they disagree with because they're against it or or whatever. Yeah, 
And uh, so once he's drugged, he gets put in a room where the guy plays Beethoven's Ninth, like, all the time. Like, he has a stereo, and it's just beaming up to the room. And uh, basically, it's just agonizing to Alex, because he can't hear it without feeling like he's going to vomit. So he eventually gets to the end of his rope, and he figures that, you know, death is a better uh, option than just sitting here and, and just being tortured. So he jumps out of the window trying to kill himself, but um, he doesn't die. He, he actually lives, and he gets uh, taken to a hospital, I think, and um, mm -hmm. I guess he, pr pretty much from there, I mean, that's the, the final little bit of the movie, is um, he gets taken to the hospital. We find out that the, I, I think the program's been shut down, because there's been a lot of public outcry yeah. in the paper. They, if, the public finds out what they do to reform Alex, and the fact that uh, it, it sort of spurred his suicide attempt or something, so like I think, I think they get, uh, I think they stop the program or whatever. Um, I can't remember. Did the director of the program meet him in the hospital? He, they had him sign something. That was um, somebody else, I think. Okay, good. That was the minister of. I can't remember what what exactly his role was. But I think that they had him sign something basically, so they wouldn't get in trouble. I'm imagining. Yeah, uh, they were going to give Alex a job once he was healed. Yeah. And um, they yeah they wanted him to sign something to keep. Um, yeah. Like they were going to give Alex things in return for him. Yeah. Signing yeah. Him. And uh, but at the very end of the movie. Uh, like the closing scene, he has a fantasy about him having sex with a woman in front of everybody. And uh, I think the last thing he says is, oh, I was cured all right. Well, it, they also are playing the music, and he can... He can hear it. That's when he has that vision of him yeah. having sex in the snow. And then he said, oh, I'm cured all right. Yeah, so like he... I guess the... Um, so the, the... What had been done to him had been reversed. Yeah, so it... And he was back to being him old, his old self which that's that's another thing about the, the question of the movie it's like since the um, sort of Pavlovian uh, conditioning wore off he mentally he was not reformed he was still a sociopath so once that wore off he was back to back to where he was well that's so, that's where it ends so we don't really know what happens oh well, yeah so I mean, that's that's it's but um, what's interesting about that is that or I guess in his, in his book, the um, there's another chapter, and the American publishers just took that chapter out. Um, it wasn't published in America first. I'm not sure which country, but anyway, in the final chapter of the book, um, Alex actually he he goes to work, and he actually does reform his ways, and he actually. Um, has redemption at the end of the mo of the book, huh. um, and it's something the author did not like. The author likes liked the movie, but there were things he didn't like, and um, and that was one of the main things, main criticisms he had of the movie was. But it wasn't a criticism at Stanley Kubrick because um, he was more following the American. because it because Kubrick didn't know about that chapter. Yeah, because when he read the book. The version he read was the American version that didn't have that chapter, and so, um, so anyway, he didn't blame the filmmakers; he blamed the publishers of his novel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he did not like that. That. that um, I mean, not not that he was mad at the movie yeah. for not having it, but he yeah. didn't like he it didn't like because of the American publishers yeah. that wasn't in there, because that was part of his book too, was about redemption. But the main part was about the moral moral question. Yeah. Um, the uh, I was reading some other interesting things ab about it. Um, that was one of the more interesting things, though. I mean, there were there are some scenes in this. I mean, um, Malcolm McDowell's great in this movie. I really like liked him in this. Yeah. Uh, the scene where's Alex that he has to go through the conditioning and he has oh, the yeah. things put in his eyelids to keep them open. That was, um, I don't know how he got through that. It was... It would have bothered me, and 
they d actually scratched his cornea doing it, um, and he and it blinded him for a little bit. And the the whole time that he has his eyelids open, there's this doctor that's dropping eye drops in his eyes. Well, it's an actual doctor. Um, it wasn't just an actor that was there yeah. dropping eye drops every so often. I mean, they had an actual medical person there to make sure he was okay during that the filming of that scene because it's it's very intense um, what he did yeah, did for that I scene. Mean, I couldn't have done that. I, I, I props to him because like the little wire things that hold his eyelids open. I mean that because they show they're them just metal. Well, yeah, yeah. They're, they're just metal, and and they show them physically put them in his eye like. Like in his lash, eyelids, on his know, eyelids, yeah. and they both go on the up and bottom and upper and the bottom, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that that just kind of made me wince because you know, you know that wasn't faked. Like that when they were filming that, that's exactly what they were doing. There was no, there was no uh, effect work done. That what you see is what you got. I mean, it was, oh. but um, it was interesting to to see the movie uh, finally since yeah. I've never seen it. Um, are you ready to move on to? Yeah, our, I mean we can go. I mean like, I, I, I liked the movie. Um, I mean we kind of covered a lot as we went through it. So yeah. I mean I kind of talked about how you know I didn't really get into the movie until we got to the prison. Well, it, um, I will say uh, it, it is a little I'm, slow. It's, and a it's little confusing. necessary. Yeah, but um, they're probably I say slow. I mean, slow with a rape scene and a murder. I mean. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, even then, the way they were filmed, I mean, like, the, 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 the rape's not, like, on screen where you see it happening. No, no, it cuts no, no. to it the, cuts the to guy. It. Yeah. And, I mean, it was, but it's just the, the, I mean, it was filmed well. The, I mean, Stanley Kubrick, I mean, yeah, he's, I mean, he's a great he's filmmaker, great but filmmaker. the, I just feel like, and like I said, that one scene with the two girls, yeah, they, they could have just not had. They could have omitted that. I mean, um, if if you would have, although they again, that out, and they it, it may have been the parallel to the other rape scene I was talking about that's in the book. Yeah, that might be why it was there because I've heard. I mean, yeah. it's pretty faithful to the book apparently. Otherwise, but um, for the sake of the film, it could have been cut because it really didn't do anything in the context it was done. It is in true. The movie. It is true. Um, the and. Um, I wish there was, there wasn't really anybody to root for, I guess, in Yeah, a way. there was no, I mean, you could, Alex is definitely the main character. You follow mm -hmm. the story of him, but he's such a deplorable, evil human being that you don't, you don't really feel sorry for him, anything he goes through, because he's so bad, um, but you... You do question yourself about the methods they use. Like, okay, do the ends justify the means? Yeah, they took away his choice, but at the same time, he doesn't rape anyone or murder. I mean, I mean like, but like I said, you don't necessarily pull for him, or like, you, like you said, there's no one to really root for. And and really, the um, I, I, the the author is so creepy. I guess um, you, you feel bad for him, obviously, because he had his house broken into and his wife raped, and like his wife dies. Of pneumonia, oh, yeah. you know, in between uh, off screen, you know, in, in between while he got Alex got sent to prison when he broke out, but um, but even I say broke out when he was released, but uh, yeah, there's nobody really to root for. Um, like the the guy, even though the author was a nice guy, like he did torture Alex, which you know at the same time. If, I if, can't blame him for I that. I can't blame him for that. Like, if a guy broke in and beat me till I'm crippled and raped my wife, I would probably want to torture him too. And if I you, think you I would be. Your hands on him, yeah, yeah. If I, I think I would be pretty justified in wanting that. But uh, <laughs> but so I mean, but he's a creepy old guy. So it's like, uh, and you hate you hate that his wife got raped. You know, I mean, like I said, but there's no, but the story isn't following the author. The story's following Alex, and it's there's no. But yeah, there's no real character to really pull for. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's I guess in this kind of universe, jobs are just assigned to you because the guy at the end was just assigning that job to Alex yeah. and the pay, and the two people that used to be in his gang got assigned to be cops. I guess. But, yeah. But again, I don't really know that. I would like to read this book sometime just to see. Um, 
the, to read the differences for myself instead of just reading on like Wikipedia or something to know these are the differences. Um, and I'd like to read the final chapter. I'd like to see how, I'd like to see if from the prison on, if there was, besides the, the experiment done to Alex, if there was anything more to the leading up to the redemption chapter at the very end. Um, yeah. As far as if, if, as far as Alex actually, if there's ever a point where he becomes a character that you're actually care for yeah. <laughs> in the book. Because, yeah. um, but definitely in the, in the movie, I mean, um, but you do enjoy Malcolm McDowell in the movie and he yeah. narrates throughout the movie oh, yeah. what's going on and I actually did enjoy the narration. But, um, which is rare if you ask me, that narration's successfully done well, yeah. you know, I mean. But for me personally, <laughs> I don't see myself coming back to watch this really again. I've, I've seen it, so I know what, I mean, I can understand the people that, that like it a lot and I know what the fuss is about now. <laughs> Um, I mean, my score, like, I would give it three and a half out of five stars, not because, I mean, not based on its merit as a, as a film, of course, I mean, it's, it's ranked higher than that. Yeah. Um, just my personal scoring, which is how, what, how much you enjoy, which is what this is. It's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. about how much I would want to watch this again. It's not about uh, the, for me, it's not about, uh, because I'm going to rank some bad movies, you know, yeah. higher than, oh, yeah. than others, That's just true. because I enjoy watching them. Just my enjoyment, and and it was nice to know, to finally see it, um, and but that's that's going to be my ranking. Um, if I would I suggest it to others, um, if you're a fan of Stanley Kubrick, watch it. Oh, yeah. um, definitely. If you're a fan of Malcolm McDowell, uh, watch it. This is I haven't really seen. I don't know if I've really seen a lot of that stuff when he's young. I actually saw him in uh, Caligula because I think Caligula was on uh, Netflix at one point, and mm -hmm. I watched that. And I mean, it was produced by Penthouse Films, so I mean, you can imagine what. But he did good. I, well, I mean, he's a great actor. I mean, so I mean, he did well in that movie. But um, but yeah, that's, I haven't seen him a lot as a as you know. A I lot see of him a lot when he's older. Yeah, uh, and we and we met him that one time at Dragon Con. That's true, and he's a nice guy, by the way. But yeah, but he he was he was good. Um, um, yeah, I, I mean. A lot of the other cast members, I guess, he's really, who, you're following him most of the time. Yeah, I mean, everybody other else. Pe other just... people come in and out, but there's nobody else that's really there. So it's kind yeah. of disconnected from the rest of the cast. It really is. I mean, there's no real, what I would call a true supporting role. It's just him. I mean, you have people around him, but they're not there for very long. And like you said, they're sort of in and out. It's, it's really the story of of him I'm just know? following him yeah. and um but yeah i would say i mean there it's i'd say it's worth checking out if you're in, if you you have any interest in seeing the movie and if you're watching this you probably have already seen the movie and you're already interested in it <laughs> yeah i'm not trying to knock it saying three and a half i'm just saying that's uh, just uh as far as that's just where i'm putting it for my enjoyment it's not it's not my type of movie, I guess, yeah, really. Yeah, I understand. Uh, my score, uh, pretty much, uh, like, it, what I have to say is, is pretty close to yours. I'm going to go ahead and give it four stars, I guess. Um, but I will agree with you. I Like, there are only certain people I would recommend this movie to, because, I like, if people don't like this movie, I can understand why. Oh, and if you it's a, have any aversion to, like, it, like, if... Any kind of movie has a rape scene and that bothers you, don't watch yeah. this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's meant to sort of be like a sensory shock. Like, everything you see is supposed to shock you. And um, it's and it does a good job in that. I mean, and, but like like you said, if you're a fan of Stan, Stanley Kubrick, watch it. Um, I would, like I said, it's just, this is one of those movies, I think we mentioned in a previous review, it's one of the movies where I don't really watch this a lot. Every now and then, once in a blue moon, I'll get in the... I sort of have to be in the mood to sort of watch A Clockwork mm -hmm. Orange, but um, it's not something that I could watch over and over again. It's just, even though I like it, and even though I give it four stars, it's one of those that, that I crack out every once in a while just because. But, but um, because it, it is sort of sensory overload, and it's an overloading movie. And... But yeah, I wouldn't, 
if you have any aversion to rape scenes in any movie of any capacity, don't watch this movie. Um, or if you have any aversion to uh, really nudity in general. Um, yeah, there's... I mean, there's a lot of nudity in this movie. Uh, but it... I mean, if, if, you, if you like sort of philosophical movies that, that raise, like, uh, philosophical questions... I would recommend it because it does. That's really the the point of the movie is is raising the, the notion about choice and free will and stuff. Um, but yeah, like I'm trying to think of who. Like it, I would say I would recommend it, but you got to take that with a grain of salt. I I would recommend it in certain instances. Um, I wouldn't recommend anyone unless you're a huge Kubrick fan to to run out and buy it, but. Uh, like if if you were to find it on Netflix or something, um, and and you know what you're getting into, I mean that's that's the big thing. You kind of got to know what you're getting yourself into before yeah. you watch it. And, I really um, didn't know a lot about this movie going into it. I mean, I'd seen images before of him with his eyes held, held open. And yeah. So there were some things, but I didn't really know the plot or anything going into this. Yeah. And which but, was kind of refreshing because a lot of stuff I, I know know yeah. about beforehand. And if you're a fan of like art house or, or like artsy movies, I would recommend it because it, it's sort of got that art house artsy feeling to it. But uh, but if you're uh, by and large like a lot of the people out watching movies today, I probably wouldn't necessarily tell them to go check this out because yeah. it's 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 a niche. You know, it's not it's, a general it's, audience. It's, it's not a general. Movie. Yeah, it's not a not something that uh, every like housewife or, or every Joe off the street would just pick up and enjoy. It's, it's, it has a sp specific audience that it will cater to. And uh, like I said, I don't watch it often because it's, it's not one of those movies that I, I kind of have to be in the mood to <coughs> watch. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I would, give it, I would give it four stars because I do enjoy it. And um, out of the, I guess, cinematic significance of it, but yeah, I can understand three and a half. Three and a half is reasonable too, because, um, like you said, it's personal enjoyment. You know, I I, I can understand. But um, yeah, that that would probably wrap up the review. Yeah, you know, I don't have too much anything else to say. <laughs> but uh, thank you for watching part time, and I hope you will tune in next time. See you later.